Well, good morning. Uh, if you're like a lot of people today, you maybe went to bed last night with a little bit of fear on your mind and woke up with it again today because of the coronavirus uh, pandemic. And as I thought about this, a verse uh, out of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 came to my mind, and, and I'll read it for you here. Paul says, uh, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, that idea of the spirit of, uh, spirit of fear, that doesn't come from God. Uh, that comes from our own thinking and the way that we evaluate situations. Uh, God has given us a, a courageous spirit, one of love, one of power, and one of a sound mind. You know, the Bible is actually full of statements, and somebody said at least 365 verses, which means uh, there's one a day, that tells us don't be afraid and tells us what to do and, and uh, how we ought to live our lives. And... Uh, so don't be afraid. Now, as, I'm, as I was thinking about this, I think there's a difference between concern and between fear. And, and let me give this to you. Uh, it's okay to be concerned about the pandemic, but don't allow that concern to turn into a strangling fear that chokes you down. And by the way, that's at the heart of the word anxious. It means uh, uh, to get a chokehold and to strangle you. And so if, we just, if we're just filled with anxiety and anxious thoughts, uh, we, we can't breathe. We can't live the way that God wants us to live. But let me give this to you. Fear, in the context of what we're facing today, is an uneasiness that causes a person to cower due to the possible threat of danger. So we don't want that kind of fear. We want concern. Let me give that to you. To perceive and comprehend the facts and then act accordingly. And uh, you know what I'm seeing is more fear sometimes than what uh, what is concern. You you go to the supermarket, and when people are going out with you know three buggies full of toilet paper and and uh, and a cart full of meat and things, uh, you know they're 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 overcome a bit by fear I think instead of being rational and acting responsibly. But something I've often said over the years is you either control your thoughts and your emotions or they control you. Now, let me state that in a different way. You may not be what you think you are, but what you think you are. Our thoughts control our actions. And, uh, of course, God knew this very well, and he wanted to communicate that truth to Joshua. After Moses had died, Joshua became the leader of the Israelites, out of, uh, of God's chosen people. And uh, to make sure Joshua was, uh, was not controlled by a spirit of fear, God told him in Joshua chapter 1, you ought to read verses 7 through 9, uh, but he said, be strong, be courageous. So those are two B's, and then he gave him two don'ts. Don't be frightened and don't be dismayed. Why? And here's the basis of why he should be courageous and should not yield to fear. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. What God did for Abraham, what God did for Moses, and what God did for Joshua, I believe God will do for us. Uh, I, I think Paul's the author of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. Other people dispute it, and that's okay. I'm fine if they want to be wrong. I'll, I'll choose to be right. Uh, but Paul wrote in, in Hebrews 11 about it. That's called the, the Christian Hall of Fame. It's, it's a book of... Uh, it's a chapter that speaks about people who were not fret-filled, but who were faith-filled individuals. And Paul said, through faith, they conquered kingdoms, administered justice, gained what was promised, shut the mouths of lions, a reference to Daniel, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, gained strength in weakness, became mighty in battle, put foreign armies to flight, and women received back their dead, raised to life. Referring to some of the things that the prophet Elisha and Elisha, uh, Elijah and Elisha, it's hard to distinguish between the true two, it's a J and an S, but what those two prophets did for widows and their sons. So as you think about today, I'm gonna leave you with Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So is your mind today going to be filled with fretfulness and fear, or is it going to be filled with the joy and peace that God has given you? And notice the key, as you trust in Him. And notice the result. You will overflow with hope, how? Not by the spirit of fear, but by the spirit of God's Holy Spirit. God bless you. God's gonna give you the strength and need for today. Just keep on keeping on.